trying to build relationships with your guys and learn a new offense. And then you also got you know, your family, you're trying to get over there. We got a son that's a junior in high school, so you got to get him in school right away so we can get with his team. So, so it's been great. And it's great the spring breaks here, so it'll slow down a little for me and get some of that stuff taken care of. So I can just focus on ball recruiting after that. What's been your early impressions on some of the older guys of the group? Love the older guys. You know, Booker's a, he's a stud. And he's a great, not only a great player, he's a great human being, great leader. You know, Jay Rob, he's uh, Jaden, done a good job with his leadership. We don't have a lot of older guys, you know. Those two guys there, uh, Brock's been around a little bit, and he's bike, he's battling with uh, Brailsford. But the rest of the guys were all really young. This, this offensive the, line's no joke from Washington. Do you see that emphasis that DeBoer has on the offensive line? Well, I think everywhere I've been, the, office, the emphasis on the offensive line, because everybody knows how critical that is. And we know we, oh, this is a critical time here because we are so young and, you know, lack a little depth. So we, really development is, is critical. Well, how confident are you in the tackle position? Because you talk about a spot where you don't have a lot of experience. It's one of them. Well, yeah. Obviously, when, when you go in and you have really nobody that's been a starter or a tackle on the roster, it's obviously a challenge. But we do have talented kids on this roster that are capable of doing it. So it's just a matter of us really them really understanding the scheme, the techniques that are being taught, and then it's just going to be a grind from now until we get to that first game. How do you approach the center position with someone like James who's been around here, but Parker who's been in the system elsewhere? Yeah, it's great competition. You know, we're rotating guys, and you know, it's nothing's better for for your team than competition. And you know, when you got another guy behind you that's pushing you and can win that job, you know, that raises the level of play for both those guys. So I think it's critical. Brock's an extremely intelligent kid. It's amazing how he's picked up this offense so quickly. Having Parker here who's been through the offense also helps, but it's 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 good to see those two guys competing. What is it going to take what is it going to take to be able to win that ball center position? Well, it, it, it all starts with, you know, having leadership skills and communication skills and having a high football IQ. You got to understand the scheme, you got to be able to communicate great to the guys next to you. You got to get people in the right positions. And then from there, obviously, it's, it's getting the ball to the quarterback, and then it's getting to the right places and playing at a high level. But it, that's a cerebral, mental position, and so that's going to be a big part of it. Well, will weight be diff- like not as important in this offense on the offensive line in terms of can, can players play a little bit lighter with the way you guys are going to play, or is that something? Hey, we, and I've been in, in different offenses throughout my career, ones that went really fast, ones that were pro style. It's still about getting guys as big as they can be where they can still move and play at a high level. And there's times we're going to play with a little bit of tempo. So they do have to be in shape to be able to do that. But that's through the training they're having. So um, it's not like we have this big weight loss plan going on. But there's some guys that are waiting to lose some weight. We're, we're on that. But it, it's still about get as big as you can where you still can move. When you talk about juice squad, uh, how much does Tyler Booker bring the juice to that room? <laughs> he brings a lot of juice, you know, and, and, and you know, it's always, whenever you come into a room for the first time, it, it's a process of, it's a two-way street, right? They got to earn my respect, but, but also I got to earn their respect. They got to know that this guy knows what he's talking about. He can help them get better. That's where it all starts, right? And once they know that, then you can coach them hard and get them where they want to be. But, but he's definitely the alpha. He's the guy, when he talks, people listen. So he's a critical piece of this, no question. And how long have you used that juice squad kind of slogan here? Man, that, that probably started early in North Carolina. We used to have Pound the Rocks, and then we went to Juice Squad. And, you know, it's always good. You know, nobody gives the old lineman any love, right? You know, I always joke, if there's a 40-yard run and the back goes untouched, they say it's a great run, right? But if he gets tackled in the backfield, the old line isn't very good, right? There's usually the other words used for that. So, you know, I, I like to make it fun for the guys. And, you know, we got Juice Squad. Uh, we'll have hoodies, hats. We even got a a big gold chain with a gold juice squad, and they win that line of the week. It's amazing how much they love putting that thing on, right? So so we promote our guys. And, and you know, when you're in the football culture, everybody knows how important they are. Right? How important is it to establish chemistry between the O-line and the quarterback, especially throughout the spring? It, it's important, you know, across the team, really, right? But, you know, obviously, you're, the more your linemen respect that quarterback, I always felt like they just gave a little more and cared about him. And, and, and also, that quarterback's got to feel confident. Those guys in front of him and not really protect him. They do the things that need to be successful in this offense. So that all is very important. You talk about Tyler the- Booker being such a leader on this offensive line, who's returning, and then Brailsford being a leader of Washington last year and coming in with all the knowledge of the offense. To, is it good for those two to maybe lead in tandem if you can get that out of them? There's place for leadership and multiple guys. 
You know, there's no doubt about that. You know, you, you like to have five guys all showing leadership skills. That doesn't always happen, right? But it, it's not a situation where one guy has to just be the guy, right? But I think that's going to be a natural process of Booker is the alpha guy. But Booker's very good about, you know, listening to other guys. And he's as good a teammate as he is a leader, and that's important. You talked about that level of competition. What is it like for you and your guys to be able to go up against Coach Roach and that defensive line that they've got? It's a challenge every day. You know, you always hear iron sharpens iron, all those two things, but it makes you better. It forces you to compete. It forces you to get better and have a sense of urgency or you'll get embarrassed. And so that's what I love about it, right? So you feel like, hey, if you're doing – I've been in places before where you're having positive plays on offense and you didn't really know if you were very good or not because you weren't sure how good those guys were. But you feel like when you do some positive things here, you feel like, okay, we're, we're making the right progress. How much tra- cross-training do you do in a, in a spring like this? And with a guy like Booker, do you ever think about maybe crushing him at tackle? Or can he, can he do that? We've talked about that. And I, and I do think there's some value for him to cross-train a little bit. And I do think it's important, you know, New offense, you got to really have guys in learning positions, but we have a couple guys that are playing multiple positions. You know, I've always been big on having eight to ten guys snapping year round. Half those guys may never snap their whole career here, but you never can have enough of those guys. And then for their future, it's the first question the NFL scouts ask me every time can he snap? So it's good for everybody, right? I, I had a situation, shoot, years ago, I thought four centers was enough. I lost three centers in one week. And that was a bad situation. I said, from this point forward, I'll have eight to 10 guys snapping because because it's a skill. You know, when you're in a shotgun offense, back in the day, if you were just under center, you could throw anybody in there. But in a shotgun offense, it's a skill, right? And I don't have to reflect on last year, but right, nobody notices the snap till it's bad, right? So it's it's important that you have guys who can do it. Did you pay attention to that? Is that something that you, you look at film of like what maybe went wrong with Alabama with the snaps last year? Or is that something you can even? No, you know, obviously everybody heard about it, but no, that's, you know, we train those guys and we teach them the techniques and we grade them every day. Every snap is charted. We know, you know, so it, it's something we take serious off season, in season. They're 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 snapping year round. When, when you came in and saw a younger guy open his six seven three twenty, what was your first thoughts you had? Well, I knew who he was, you know, from from previous spots, and and it was good to see the maturity he has right now and his work ethic, and he's really grown and, and come a long way. So, you know, hey. As many six, seven long guys that can move that you have on your roster, the happier you are, no question. How big is the struggle with Coach Gavin? 